Dear viewers, I want to share this art hack with you. It is very simple to do and exciting. I don't know what the proper term for this art is called. I got the inspiration through a Japanese art form. I don't recall the name. It was some years ago. Recently, after my cat passed away, I felt like making a video and sharing it. I'm using Photoshop, but for those of you who don't have Photoshop, I'm sure you can probably find a free software out there to do the same. The original form of the inspiration was done through traditional Japanese materials. So, if you don't have software assistance, the process can be replaced with physical materials. Traditionally, this technique is for making landscape art and made from a series of premium Japanese paper with pattern printed in it. I thought the technique was very cool, so I was inspired to make some animal arts out of it. Today, I will do a step by step demonstration. So now I will show you in Photoshop. And I started with layers. A photograph underlay, a photograph of the cat or my cat. This is the line that I traced over using the laso tool. The patterns that you have seen in the art, I have made them in advance. So now I am turning them off and on in the different layers. So these are patterns I made in advance. Or collected over time. You can find, you can use newspaper or magazine clippings for like a physical, a physical art if you're choosing to do it that way. The good thing about using computer Photoshop is that the pattern that you're using, you can alter the tone, color, and saturation to fit your needs. So these patterns can be, you can make them out of Illustrator by tracing something or scan it into your computer and remake the pattern. Now why don't we why don't we take it from the beginning? Let's start by tracing the cat, the photograph. So now I'm just building some layers or shutting down some layers. And then now I change opacity to the layer and using a laso tool I will just quickly go over the, pho the photograph what you want to do is make the outlines thick not too thin the outlines will help you trim out well, the outlines will help you trim the joints of the patterns later. So I am doing it as a demonstration. I won't trace line for line or hair for hair. Well, I guess you, you can go to that extent if you want. So I am tracing over the darker areas, the darker parts. Some areas, there's gradient, but you can simplify it and just make it, like uh, you can make it into all one dark section. And if you are choosing to do the physical form by cutting paper, then these lines should be big and bold. In the end, you do want that one piece of paper to connect. You don't want to have hollow hose 
for lines that don't connect. The good thing about using Photoshop is that you can always go back to fix it or adjust. But the fun thing about doing it physically is that you might have to plan out your steps. And it's also fun to do. And the physical art that if you have done in layers with actual paper that you collected in clips, it will definitely be a lot, a lot more richer, more fulfilling. You can see the depth more than the printout. So now I'm speeding up the video, going over the outline quickly. Now we're going to do the eyes. There are some areas that isn't really in the shadow or line or it is a fine line but I'm gonna make it as if it's a dark bold line and again some of this is to a bit of your own interpretation or art form type of interpretation so now the outline is done. Oops, I made a mistake here. I'm going to go back and put the black outline in the right layer. Now I'm going to take the patterns that I've made in advance and put it underneath the outline, cut them out. So the good thing about using Photoshop is that you can use different layers, combine them, and just trim out the areas that you want to keep. And for those of you who are really into getting the cools and the warms right, definitely using a computer is easier and you can play with the gradient, you can play with the hue and the color tones. You can really get the cool and the warm to pop out. So now here for the darker fur area, I'm using a darker pattern. What I've done is I just make the layers lighter right now so I can see through it. So I'm going to do this demonstration quickly. It won't be the same as the original. And if some of the patterns are too short, you can combine them together. If you spend the time, it will look seamless. I guess one of the good advantage about doing this is that I, I suppose when you have hundreds of pictures of your pet, they just sort of become pictures and doing some type of art out of it feels a bit more satisfying. So I'm taking a pattern that I have made before and making some of these patterns is pretty easy. Just take the squares and then you start offsetting each and one of them. Until you get a whole sheet. So now during this time of COVID, I guess, it's, it'll be fun to do something at home. The advantage of doing computer is that you can create most of everything you need instead of going out to buy material to collect them. But the plus side with the physical part would be that I like the layering that you can see. And for the black outline, it's a harder board that you can cut out from. And you can definitely see the depth, the depth of the art. And I forgot to mention that if you are going to go the physical route, 
you would have to blow up the photograph using a tracing paper and trace over the photograph and that you would have to plan ahead then place it onto the black mat board or a black sheet of paper and you would cut it out so you can get a bigger image. Now I'm taking a different pattern with a bit of warmer color and just cutting out the excess. And one thing I will say, there, there could be white for areas, but don't leave it white. Put a pattern that's lighter color into it. So some of these are patterns I collect for inspiration. And this is a pattern that I have created more like a wood pattern flow. The fun thing about doing computer is that you can always just kind of go back and experiment with different patterns. It doesn't cost you anymore. If you mess up on an actual piece of paper, then, then you would have to figure out an alternative. But whatever pattern that you collect, it could be from newspaper, it could be from magazine, it could be from your old curtain shower curtain or something that you don't need anymore so those are plenty I suppose now I'm taking a darker pattern to sort of simulate the floor and change the light contrast of it uh, this stage it seemed a bit uh, too monotone so now I'm going to play with the background put in a bit of pink so again, with uh, computers that you can, if, you're, if your pattern is not big enough, you can copy another layer and align it to make it look like it is a bigger sheet. However though, <clears throat> again, it'll look like a nice print. If I have the time, I'll probably do a physical one. As you can see, I'm not sticking to the original that I had made previously. And I am sure yours will turn out better than mine. And if you decide to give it a try, please, when you're done, you can comment back and show your results. Or maybe you can take inspiration from this and make something else out of it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please consider subscribing 